Hello. In this video, I'll talk a bit about cut vertices. We'll define them, look at some examples, um, and then we will look at a couple theorems, which uh, one of them sort of generalizes um, uh, some behavior that we'll see in, in the examples, uh, and the other gives us a characterization for identifying cut vertices and working with cut vertices. So first off, what's a cut vertex? Um, so a cut vertex in a connected graph. So if we have a connected graph, what's a cut vertex? Uh, is a vertex V such that G minus V is disconnected. So that is, uh, you start with, with a connected graph, and if you can identify a vertex in it such that its removal produces a disconnected graph, then that's uh, a cut vertex. So what we're really looking at here are, are graphs. Um, yeah, the big idea with this section is we're looking at, at, at graphs that are sort of minimally connected. They, they're connected, but they contain these, these cut vertices. Um, and so the removal of any one of these cut vertices disconnects the graph. So in that way, they're sort of minimally uh, connected. Uh, so this is the case um, for, yeah, for a connected graph, uh, but generally we can talk about a cut, ver cut vertex in a disconnected graph. Uh, so generally uh, a cut vertex is a vertex V such that when I remove it, I end up with more components than what I started with such that uh, the number of components in G minus V is strictly greater than uh, the number of components in just G. So I remove the vertex and I end up with more components. Uh, so notice that's the case up here with the connected graph, right? Because the number of components in a connected graph is one. And if I disconnect it, that means I now have a disconnected graph. And so uh, the number of components is at least uh, two is greater than or equal to two, which is strictly greater than one. So before we look at a couple of examples, I just want to mention gen sort of generally what, what the picture is for a graph with a cut vertex in it. So we have this vertex V that disconnects the graph. And, and most of the time we will look at cut vertices of connected graphs, but you know we want this general definition as well. Okay, so right, the idea is we have this vertex V and when I remove it, I end up with uh, two or more components that are left over. So I like, I'll draw these big blobs, or as one of my old professors called them, potatoes. So there's a bunch of vertices in this blob, at least one vertex in each blob. And we have at least two blobs. So these are my components. We could have more. Let's say, let's call these G1, G2, GK. So these are what's left. Um, once we remove V, but I'm looking at just G here. Um, and so if these are the components of G minus V, that means V has to be adjacent to at least one vertex in each of these components. Now it could be adjacent to, to more vertices. We could have a couple vertices here, uh, but it has to be adjacent to at least one vertex in each component. Otherwise, uh, the graph would have been disconnected to begin with. The other thing to notice here is I can't have edges um, between components, right? I can't have a vertex here that's adjacent to a vertex in that component of G minus V. Otherwise, the removal of V uh, would not disconnect the graph. Uh, and so this is our picture. We remove V, we end up with these components. V is adjacent to at least one vertex in each one, and there's no edges between these components. So this will be helpful uh, to prove a couple theorems, but let's take a look at a couple examples um, of cut vertices. So here we'll look at this, this connected graph H1. And I want to point out uh, some of the cut vertices. So let's see here. I want to focus, I want to look at yeah, any, any vertex such that its removal results in a disconnected graph. So notice I remove, if I remove this vertex, I would be left with this as one of my components. And the, other, and the rest of the graph is one of my components. So that would be a disconnected graph, and so this is a cut vertex. Uh, at the same time, if I removed this vertex from H1, again, I would be left with a disconnected graph. 
if I removed, say, let's look at this vertex. If I removed, say, this vertex, notice my graph would still be connected, right? I'd be looking at this whole this whole chunk of the graph, which is still connected. So this would be, uh, this is not, not a cut vertex. And these are cut vertices. Cut vertex, cut vertex. What else are cut ver uh, a cut vertex here? This one would not be. This one would be a cut vertex. So there's another cut vertex. And this one as well would be a cut vertex. Uh, this end vertex here uh, would not be would not be a cut vertex. In general, an end vertex uh, can never be a cut vertex. So it looks like that graph contains uh, four cut vertices. Let's take a look at another graph. How about this one? So notice if I remove any one of these vertices here on the side, uh, my graph will still be connected. So none of those are cut vertices. This vertex is not a cut vertex. Down here, this vertex is not a cut vertex. Uh, but this one would disconnect the graph. This one would disconnect the graph. And this one would disconnect the graph. So these are all cut vertices. Finally, we'll look at H3 here. And again, I'll just go vertex by vertex and identify the cut vertices. So let's see, this one, not a cut vertex. The graph is connected after its removal. This one, not a cut vertex. Not a cut vertex, not a cut vertex, not a cut vertex, not a cut vertex. So this graph contains no cut vertices. What we say here is that if a graph doesn't contain any cut vertices, this is what's called a non separable graph. There are no cut vertices in this graph. So in, in this sense, it's, it's, it's pretty well connected, at least to some degree, it's pretty well connected. We could say it's for sure more connected than uh, graphs that do contain cut vertices, right? It's, it's sort of stronger than other graphs. It takes more to, to disconnect them. So there's a couple examples of cut vertices. What I want to do for a second is um, notice something. I, can, I want to identify non-cut vertices in this graph again in H1. So I, I mentioned that those two, um, these two vertices were not cut vertices, not a cut vertex. And it does contain some other non-cut vertices, right? This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All of these other vertices are non-cut uh, vertices. Um, but I'll point out that H1 contains, yeah, at least two cut vertices. There's at least two there. In fact, there's quite a bit. And in this one as well, there's quite a bit of non-cut vertices. This one and this one, for instance. Again, there's at least two. Now, I want to do one more example here. And that's to look at a path. So let's say look at, I don't know, P7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's P7. And look for the cut vertices again. So this is a cut vertex, cut vertex, cut vertex, cut vertex, cut vertex. This one contains just two cut vertices. So not a cut vertex, not a cut vertex. Uh, but the other ones all are. In some sense, this is kind of the... Um, yeah, what do I want to say? Kind of the, 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 the extreme in terms of number of non-cut vertices in a graph. In general, any graph has at least two non-cut vertices, two vertices that are not cut vertices. Um, let's go ahead and prove that. All right, so you might, yeah, you might look at a bunch of graphs and see that everyone has has at least two has at least two not cut vertices, uh, and and that's what leads you to to try and prove it. So yeah, what is this proof gonna gonna entail? The idea is to look at a longest path in the graph, and the ends of those paths, uh, the ends of that path, are necessarily not cut vertices. 
So that's sort of the idea here. So proof. So we'll let G be a non-trivial connected graph. And I want to show that it contains at least two vertices that are not cut vertices. And like I said, the idea is to pick a longest path. This, yeah, this theme, um, this kind of tool that we have at our disposal, we've seen this a number of times to choose a longest path in the graph. Um, yeah, this, this keeps coming up over and over again. This is what we call a method. It's a trick that you use over and over again. So I'll let P be a longest path in G. And let's go ahead and come up with names for the end vertices of the path. Say uh, P is a UV path in G. And my claim is that U and V are the, are the vertices that are not cut vertices. So I'll say claim U and V are not cut vertices. The idea is if they were a cut vertex, I'd be able to obtain a longer path. So without loss of generality, without loss of generality, um, we'll show that U is not a cut vertex. And because U and V, right, these names aren't special at all, and I can also reverse a path, right? The UV path is also, uh, can be made into a VU path by reversing it. I might as well just pick one of these vertices and show it's not a cut vertex. And then the argument will be exactly the same for the other vertex. All right, so we'll proceed by contradiction here. So suppose to the contrary, that U is a cut vertex. And again, the idea here is I want to show uh, that, that P, that if this is really the case, then P wasn't a longest path in the first place. And that'll, um, that'll contradict our assumption. So suppose that U is a cut vertex, um, then G minus U is disconnected, right, by definition. And so the removal of U leads to a number of components, at least two components. So here's my vertex U. Here's my picture again, All right? That general picture is going to get some use. I have at least two components. Maybe I have more. Here's GK. And let's call this a G1 and G2. Now, as I said before, right, in order for this to really make sense, in order for you to really be a... a um, you know, for G minus U to be a disconnected graph means that U has to be adjacent to at least one vertex here in G1. Um, actually, I want to be a little bit more careful about this. So, right, I have this path P. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, I'm going to let W be the next vertex. Uh, in P. So right, U has some has some uh, partner W. Uh, yeah, U has some partner, uh, some sub, uh, yeah, some vertex next to it that's W. And I'm going to just suppose that W is in G1. Is in uh, G1. So here's W in G1. Now think about this path P for a second. How could P, how could P work, right? Remember, I know that U is adjacent to, to vertices and all of these components. There's at least two components. So how could P work here? U is uh, this end vertex of the path. And I know that once I remove U, right? I remember, I remember that uh, if I have two vertices in different components of G minus U, they can't be connected. So that means that this path, I need to draw this a little bit bigger. Sorry, give me a second. I'm need a bigger potato. Here's my vertex W. Um, 
this path has to be contained in one of these components, or at least the path after I remove u. So I'm going to let p prime uh, be the wv subpath of p. And yeah, the big thing to notice here is that since there can't be edges between uh, components, uh, that p prime has to be entirely contained in one component, let's say g1, right? Because I said w was in, was in g1. So p prime is contained in uh, g1. So that means v is also in g1. So that means the rest of my path, it could be some other vertices here, um, that, that P prime is entirely contained in G1. Now, can you find a longer path than P now? Certainly. What about this vertex here? We know that there has to be some vertex X in say G2, and there's at least two components. Um, then X, uh, let's say let X, X, be a vertex adjacent to u in, say, g2. And then we can form this longer path. Then uh, x, u, w, do, 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 all the way up to v is a longer path than p. So this is a contradiction. Contradiction. Um, so u is not a cut vertex. All right, that was our assumption that led to this contradiction. So u is not a cut vertex. Hence, v is not a cut vertex. And uh, g contains at least two cut vertices. or sorry, it contains at least two non-cut vertices. At least two non-cut vertices. That's the idea. Okay, one more theorem in this video. And that's the following for identifying cut vertices and giving us something to work with um, in terms of cut vertices. So what this says is that a vertex V in a graph is a cut vertex if and only if there are two vertices, uh, so U and W, distinct from V, such that V lies on every UW path in G. So let's go ahead and look at one of our examples again. We'll pick out a couple ver cut vertices. So let's say this is my U, or... Yeah, let's look at one cut vertex, so that would be my V. And what this is saying is that I can find two vertices in the graph such that every um, path between them goes through V. And so for instance, this one we could call U and this one would call v, uh, W. So notice that every UW path, in order to get from U to W, I have to go through V exactly because it's a cut vertex. And it's a cut vertex because I can find these two vertices. This is true for any, any cut vertices. So here's another cut vertex. Let's call it V. Again, I can find, let's pick, how about this one, U and W, such that every UW path um, contains V. So that's the idea. All right, so how are we going to prove this one? Well, this is an if and only if, so we have two directions to go. Let's start with the forward direction. Let V, well, actually, I mean, the first thing I wanna do, uh, notice I haven't supposed that G is a connected graph here. Um, so if it's if it's not a connected graph, if it's already disconnected, remember, remember a cut vertex there means I've separated it. Uh, when I remove that vertex, I end up with more components than what I started with. And so that is inside of that component of the cut vertex, I've disconnected that component. So 
what, what this really means is I might as well just consider that connected component that contains my cut vertex and just think of my graph to be that component. That is, we might as well just assume that the graph is connected and we don't lose any generality there. So it's okay, maybe I'll say that here, it's okay to assume that G is connected. Okay, so let V uh, be a cut vertex. A, oops. Be a cut vertex of G. And I want to show that there are U and W distinct from V, that V lies on every UW path. So if V is a cut vertex, then G minus V has at least two components. Say G1 and G2. And right, if you have this general picture in your head, right, here's, here's my vertex um, V, and I have these, these two components, G1 and G2. And remember, in order for this to make sense, V has to be adjacent to at least one vertex in each component say x, uh, no, sorry, we have names for these in this theorem, um, u and w. And then here is my, this proves my existence of the two vertices u and w such that um, every path uh, from u to w goes through v. So I'll say let u be a vertex in g1 adjacent to v and w a vertex in G2 adjacent to V. Since there are no edges between G1 and G2, every UW path has to go through V. Uh, since there are no edges connecting vertices of G1 to G2, uh, every UW path must contain V. And that's it for this direction. Let's take a look at the other direction. So suppose uh, there exists two vertices U and W such that every UW path contains V. Uh, and, and I want to conclude that G minus V is disconnected. Well, if every UW path contains V and I remove V, then there are no UW paths. So let me say, then there are no UW paths in G minus V. Hence, G minus V is disconnected, right? There exists two vertices that are not connected in G minus V, and so G minus V is disconnected. And that's it. So this one's not too bad um, of a proof, uh, and it gives us just a little bit of, of something to work with. Okay, that's it for this video. See you next time.